Uh, I'm Herb London, the president of the Hudson Institute. Every generation believes that it lives in an age of transition, and of course this generation is no different. What is different, however, is that I really do believe that this is an age of transition. One of the most momentous things is happening in Western Europe at the moment. After World War II, the leaders of the great countries in Western Europe came to the conclusion that Europe should be united in some fashion. Prime Minister Kohl in Germany, uh, Strauss and others came to the conclusion that some sort of united German, not, not merely a united Germany, but a united Western Europe is possible. What happened, of course, is that they started with an economic idea, and that was the, the euro. There was more than a euro and more than simply a trade association. There were political ramifications to it as well, overlooking thousands of years of history, suggesting that the Europeans could come together even if they didn't speak the same language, even if they didn't share the same culture, and even if they didn't have the same customs. And so this great experiment was to, was to occur. In some sense, it was a post-democratic experiment because the argument was that we would have a European parliament, but a parliament that was not responsive to the people who lived in these European countries, a parliament that was largely responsible only to the bureaucrats in Brussels. And so the attempt was made to harmonize policy in Brussels through the use of bureaucracy without any regard for the people. And now we have a, a, a convulsion that is occurring in Europe, which has changed this way of thinking. The convulsion has started in Greece with economic problems and insolvent Greece that I think will soon be led by Spain, Italy, Ireland, and Portugal. So this is merely the beginning of what is going to be a very significant transition. Can this unity, this European Union, continue to exist? Will the northern countries of Europe pay the bills of those in the south? Will we find ourselves in a position where the schisms in Europe are so deep that Europe as an entity, or Western Europe as an entity, cannot continue? Is the European Union bound to fail? Is the Margaret Thatcher scenario, the skepticism about this entire project, likely to now come to fruition? Well, these are the great questions of our time. And it seems to me economic problems are merely the tip of the proverbial iceberg. I was in Austria very recently and meeting with an Austrian merchant, and he asked the question, a very obvious question, should I be in the position of having to bail out some peasant in Sicily? Well, it's an interesting question. Should he be in that position? If the Italians are going to fail and the country is insolvent, should the Germans pick up the bill? Is it the responsibility of the IMF? Is there enough money in the IMF? The bailout for Greece was $115 billion. A bailout for Spain, for example, would be five times larger. Is there enough money that the IMF and the Germans can put together in order to bail out these countries that are now insolvent? These are the great questions, and it seems to me that one of the obvious ways of thinking about this is failure of the European Union. Will it fail, and what are the consequences, not only for Europe, but for the United States and for other nations as well? This is going to be one of those transition moments in human history that I think will have a significant bearing on the next 10 or 20 years.